and it doesn't end there. There are smaller but significant, um, equally significant, avowals of a very bad conscience. These have included uh, regret for the rape and the torture of orphans and other children in church-run schools in almost every country on earth, from Ireland to Australia. These are very serious matters, and they're not to be laughed off by references to the occasional work of Catholic charities. But I draw your attention not just to the apologies, ladies and gentlemen, but to the evasive and euphemistic form that they take. Uh, Joseph Ratzinger, the current pope, considered by some, by Catholics, to be the vicar of Christ on earth, in his comment, one of the few he's made on the institutionalization of rape and torture and maltreatment of children in Catholic institutions, he said, it's a very severe crisis which, which involves us, he said, in the following, in the need for applying to these victims the most loving pastoral care. Well, I'm sorry, they've already had that. <laughs> and to say that this is the responsibility laid upon you by the, the horrific admission that you've already had to make is not accepting responsibility in any adult sense. The same euphemism comes in the term some Christians allowed themselves to be deceived in this way and to act against the gospel. Well, anti-Semitism was preached as an official doctrine of the church until 1964. Do you think that might have something to do with public opinion in Austria and Bavaria and Poland and Lithuania? There'll come a time when the church will issue apologies and explanations and half-baked appeals for forgiveness for things it's still doing. I think that there will be an apology for what happened in Rwanda, the most Catholic country in Africa, where priests and nuns and bishops are on trial for inciting from their pulpits and on the church's radio stations and newspapers the massacre of their brothers and sisters. Staying in Africa, I think it will one day be admitted with shame that it might have been in error to say that AIDS is bad as a disease, very bad, but not quite as bad as condoms are bad, or not as immoral in the same way. I say it, I say it in the presence of His Grace, and I say it to His face, the preachings of His Church are responsible for the death and suffering and misery of millions of His brother and sister Africans, and He should apologize for it. He should show some, some shame. <laughs> for condemning my friend Stephen, Stephen Fry, for his nature, for saying, for saying you couldn't be a member of our church, you're born in sin. He's not being condemned for what he does, he's being condemned for what he is. You're a child made in the image of God. Oh no, you're not. You're a faggot. And you can't join our church and you can't go to heaven. This is disgraceful. It's inhuman. It's obscene. And it comes from a clutch of hysterical, sinister virgins who've already betrayed their charge in the children of their own church. For shame, for shame. I don't wish any ill on any fellow primate or mammal of mine, so I'm not, I don't at all look forward to the death of, uh, of Joseph Ratzinger, I don't, or any other pope, not really, um, except for one tiny reason which I ought to confess and share with you. When he dies, there's quite a long interval till the conclave can meet, and for that whole time, that whole interval, it's a delicious, lucid interlude, there isn't anyone on earth who claims to be infallible. Isn't that nice? <laughs> all I think, all I want to propose in closing is this, that if the human species is to rise to the full height that's demanded by its dignity and by its intelligence, we must all of us move to a state of affairs where that condition is permanent. And I think we should get on with it. Okay, thank you for having me. Well, Christopher, thank you very much for all that. Um, our next speaker is going to have her work cut out because she's speaking in favour of the motion that the Catholic Church is a force for good. The Conservative MP and former government minister, 
Anne Widdicombe. She's as well known for her religious views as for her politics. If you recall, she left the Church of England in 1992 in a blaze of publicity when it allowed the ordination of women priests. The following year, she converted to Catholicism and has become one of the most vocal and staunchest defenders of the Catholic Church since then. Anne Widdicombe, the floor is yours. Thank you. If apologies are due tonight, they are due from Christopher Hitchens, who has just run through one of the longest series of misrepresentations of the Catholic Church that I have heard in a long time. He has said with that certainty which characterises his utterances that the Catholic Church has had a history of anti-Semitism. Let us just look at the record of the Catholic Church. When the Jewish community was under the most serious threat that it has faced in recent centuries. And just look at the role that the Catholic Church played in the last World War. Mr. Hitchens ignores the thousands of Jews who were secreted and rescued in churches and monasteries throughout Europe. He ignores the 3,000 Jews who in the course of that conflict took refuge in the Pope's own summer palace. And coming nearer to our day, of course Christopher Hitchens is right, and who could possibly dispute with him? that the abuse of children, of innocent children, is one, in fact it is the worst offence that anybody can commit. Of that, no doubt. But again he seems to think that the Catholic Church should have had some unique insight which demonstrably was lacking in society as a whole do not expect the Catholic Church somehow, when that was the state uh, of knowledge at the time, uh, to have acted uh, in a unique and completely different way. In retrospect, yes, of course. In retrospect, yup. In retrospect, it should have done. So should the magistrates. So should, so should the Samaritans. So should the National Council of Civil Liberties. But when we ask, who, whether the Catholic Church is a force for good. Let's just try to imagine a world today without, for example, the billions of pounds that are poured into overseas aid by the Catholic Church, contributing year on year more than any single nation. Imagine the developing world had been left without the input of the medicine and the education that was brought to it by the missions. Imagine the absence of those collections Sunday upon Sunday for famine relief. Imagine the absence of the church in the local community. We play a vital role. And you don't need to be a Catholic to acknowledge that we play that role. What is the church? It is its members. It is the nuns and the monks and the priests and the lay workers and the congregations. It is not just the hierarchy of the church. And I believe that the church to which I belong is a massive, massive force for good. But let us not just keep the debate at that level. I knew somehow that when we were here tonight, we would be discussing child abuse and condoms. They came in the end. I was almost thought we were going to get through an entire speech without condoms from Christopher Hitchens, but we got them at the end. <laughs> but that, that is not what the Catholic Church is about. It isn't only about the physical relief of the